And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, a man who always waters that way, <laughs> Mr. Alan Salazar, Denver Water CEO and manager. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I have a few things that I want to say before I do something that we haven't done at Denver Water, and that's a land acknowledgement. But before I get there, I want to say, um, uh, don't draw any conclusions about my bad judgment from wearing a suit on a hot day when all of you had the wisdom to know not to do that. But I was just following Pete's uh, instructions. He said, what do I wear? Wear a suit. So I did help. Um, 1.5 million people in the metro area got up this morning, started their day, or maybe they were ending their day, and they didn't think about whether or not there would be a problem with access to water, safe drinking water, showering, flushing the toilets, all the things that we need water for. Didn't think about it. Uh, and it's a testament to Denver Water that our customers d don't have to think about it because it's a mission of this organization to provide that life-giving resource in an um, efficient and, and excellent way. 1,300 people did get up thinking about water, the employees of Denver Water, about the importance of that mission, and we're really here to celebrate that today. Always with a thought toward the future, always with a thought toward excellence of operations, ethical operations, um, stewardship of the, of the natural resources we're responsible for, um, taking the mission of human health and public safety seriously. So I, I just want to say, before we start, I want to give Denver Water employees, let's give everyone that's part of the Denver Water family, uh, let's give them a round of applause. Now, I feel a little embarrassed that um, we're, we're in this like marathon race, and I get to be the last 15 minutes of the race and run through the tape. I wasn't part of the marathon race. I didn't sweat through it. I didn't go through all the challenges. There are other people who did, and some of them, I think most of them, are memorialized in the bricks that you may have seen on the way out, employees who are part of this journey, this marathon. One of those bricks, of course, um, I probably get a half of a brick. I don't know if Alan, only the Alan part, maybe the Salazar part's not part of the bricks, but that's okay because this is not a celebration of individuals, but people collectively um, supporting this important mission. One of them, uh, of course, is Jim Lockhead, and I'll get to his introduction in a minute. But what I want to do now is something we've not done before at Denver Water, and I think it's a, this is a moment of um, importance. It's a historical moment, uh, clearly important to the future of the community we serve. And increasingly, people in this part of the country are understanding that when you have these big moments, these milestones of, of importance, you reflect not only on the future, but you think a little bit about the past and who came before us. So I'd like to start this program with an important acknowledgement, and that is a land acknowledgement. I'm going to read this one because I couldn't memorize it. We acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional territory and ancestral homelands of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and Ute nations. This region was also the site of trading, hunting, gathering, and healing for many other tribes, including the 48 contemporary indigenous tribes and nations who've historically called Colorado home. We recognize that these lands and waters hold historical, cultural, and sp spiritual significance for the indigenous peoples who were the original stewards of this land. We honor the enduring presence and resilience of indigenous communities in this region, despite a painful history of genocide and forced removal, centuries of displacement and marginalization, and the erasure of indigenous narratives, which continue to shape our communities and institutions today. We also acknowledge that our country was built in part on stolen labor and generational wealth created by enslaved Africans and, been kept, and has been kept from them while enriching others. We have the responsibility to acknowledge and uncover these truths and to work to address the ongoing impacts of this history. As we gather here today, let us reflect on our obligation to work toward justice, healing, and reconciliation. We look to the future as we acknowledge the past. Now, if you're wondering what we do at this facility, it is the newest water treatment plant in the Denver water system. 
It wouldn't be here but for the wisdom and hard work and forbearance of uh, people, again, the folks that are mentioned on the bricks. And one of the bricks is Jim Lockhead. I think of Jim, um, and people know I describe him this way, had a chance to work with him in a number of ways, but not, uh, not uh, as closely uh, as I would have liked. Our paths crossed in state government in other ways. Always looked upon Jim uh, as like, if there's a Mount Rushmore of water lawyers and water policy thinkers, Jim is on that Mount Rushmore. Um, I still rely on his good wisdom and judgment today and it's a great honor for me, uh, big shoes to fill, to acknowledge uh, my predecessor, uh, Jim Lockhead. I can't believe that, that Pete McCormick would tell these guys to wear suits. <laughs> that had to have been a practical joke, right? Um, it's great to be back. It's really exciting to be part of this celebration. And um, Alan, I really actually like what, everything you've done to the place since I left. It's, it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, what an exciting time. And it, as I was driving over here today, I, it, I, I thought about all that Denver Water has accomplished in the last 15 years or so. Um, just last week, we were at a celebration at the Highline Canal for the conveyance of the canal to Arapaho County and the placement of the conservation easement along the High Line Canal. Um, of course, we removed, have removed 25,000 lead service lines. Um, we're raising gross dam. We built a, the operations complex redevelopment project. Um, a new lab out of the National Western Center. Just all kinds of amazing accomplishments that Denver Water has, has done. The people of Denver Water, as Alan said, over the last um, 10 or 15 years or so. And in fact, the, the NTP, this incredible facility, is part of the North System Renewal Project, the complete redevelopment of the North System. Uh, Conduit 16, gross reservoir enlargement, um, just an amazing accomplishment of the people of, of Denver Water. And it all, I also thought about some of the challenges um, in the construction of this, this facility um, that we faced. Um, everything from the, the risks associated with uh, moving, I don't know how many cubic yards of material, but a lot of material from a slumping hillside to all of a sudden discovering that there was a uh, coal mine located under the facility that required um, relocation. And throughout it all, Pete McCormick, Jill Crockett led the teams um, through that incredible process and just a process of perseverance of day after day of coming to a site in adverse conditions um, from the ground up building this incredible, incredible facility. So congratulations to both the leadership and all the people on the ground working in these facilities um, and building this amazing um, site that we have here today. During the um, I mean, we, we first started talking about uh, a new treatment plant, what, about 15 years ago or so, um, when there was a lot of conversation and, and debate and uh, analysis over, do we refurbish Moffitt or we, do we build a new treatment plant? Back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out the right thing. Decided to build a new treatment plant here. And the, the metric at that particular time was we wanted to have three treatment plants that could each produce 250 MGD. That was what we did, that was how we planned it. Um, and the team, um, and I, a lot of um, analysis by, by Tom Rood and, and others about questioning, do we really need to build a facility at 250 MGD? Uh, and the team across the organization for the first time um, involving O&M, engineering, um, IT, everybody, came together to do an analysis of, well, how big do we really need to build this facility? Do we really need 250 MGD? And through that process, a lean process, choosing by advantages, uh, we have what we have here today, the 75 MGD facility, expandable into the future as needed, and saving our rate pay payers liter literally tens of millions of dollars in the process. It's part of the sufficiency of this new thinking um, about how can we do better? Um, and 
throughout the, the design phase, we also challenged the team to see if, um, you know, given the uh, availability of energy at this site, could we build a facility literally off the grid, um, self-sustaining from an energy standpoint? Um, and the engineers kind of looked at me like I was nuts at the time um, and said, no, I don't really want to do that. But, I, you know, we said, give it a try, see what you can do. And through that process, develop this site um, to be highly efficient, um, both from a space as well as an energy standpoint. And today we are, in fact, hooked to the grid, but the reason we're hooked to the grid is because we're a net energy producer at this facility. The most sustainable, I would argue, uh, the most sustainable water treatment plant in the United States um, and possibly in the world. Um, so it's an, we, we all have a lot of pride to share in this facility and all that we've accomplished for, as Denver Water for all those one and a half million people who woke up this morning, turned on the tap, and didn't even think about it. So one of the Splash boy, Street Boys, Steve Snyder, uh, when I would give remarks um, like this, um, he would always insert some kind of quote, whether it was um, a random president. He gave me a, a quote from Grover Cleveland one time. Uh, he gave me a quote from rappers. He actually, I did a rap at, at um, one, one picnic. So today's quote comes from Warren Buffett. Um, someone sitting in the shade today, is, is some, someone is sitting in the shade today because of a tree that was planted by someone several years ago. And we have planted that tree here today in this, in this facility, a tree which will provide shade, cooling um, water, clean water, for the millions of people who live in the Denver metro area for decades to come. So congratulations to that incredible legacy um, to the employees of Denver Water and the contractors of Denver Water and all the people who, had, who have worked on this facility. And we would not have accomplished um, any of this without the leadership and guidance of the Board of Water Commissioners, uh, the people that we report to, appointed by the mayor, who um, set the vision for what we want to accomplish as an organization. And so with that, I want to introduce our, the president of the board, Dominic Gomez. Thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure to join all of you here today. And I wish I could say that um, this, you know, just the magnitude of the moment was making me cry, but I think I got some sunscreen in my eyes with the um, wind. Um, on behalf of the entire Denver Water Board of Commissioners, I want to just commend the efforts of everybody involved in this project and over the many, the last decade and many years. I was not part of the board when this project was originally conceived, but I had the pleasure of tracking its progress as Pete came, I think, every quarter and gave us updates, a lot of uh, green smiley faces, things on track, things on budget, work being well done. And, and I can just tell you that it's so clear that the people working on this project are skilled and passionate professionals committed to fulfilling our mission. Our mission is to serve our customers by being a national leader in delivering clean water, operating a, and maintaining a reliable and resilient system and protecting the water resources of the West for the future. And this new treatment facility helps us achieve each part of that mission. The state-of-the-art technology at this plant will help us provide clean, safe drinking water to our customers for decades to come. And it's just one of the pieces of a larger up, uh, effort to upgrade our North Collection system, ensuring that our infrastructure is reliable and resilient. As you will hear shortly and have heard a little bit from Jim already, this plant is uniquely designed to help us mitigate the impacts of long-term climate change, protecting the natural resources that have been trusted to our care. And that's both by using energy very efficiently as well as making sure that we have a resilient facility here. Denver Water's stated vision is to sustain vibrant communities that value water for future generations. And you can see by the location of this plant those communities extend beyond the city and county of Denver's borders. We are a regional water source manager and facilities like this show that we value our partnerships with other cities and counties throughout the metro area. 
We believe it is important that we all work together to ensure our citizens have a safe, sustainable water supply, even as we collectively face challenges like population growth, climate change, and sharing our supplies with our neighbors on the Western Slope and in other states across the West. Whatever your role is in your organization, we hope you found Denver Water to be a collaborative partner during the planning and construction of this treatment plant. And we look forward to working with all of you in the future as we seek to maintain all the natural resources that make Colorado such a special place for all of us who live here. Now, I'm gonna hand it over to someone who can talk a lot more about the details of this project from um, the person who has overseen it since the very beginning. Please welcome Denver Water's Chief of Engineering, Bob Mahoney. How are we doing? Boy, that was really professional. Everyone did a great job. So, um, play some music, some jokes. Um, that actually goes to the first thing. Um, the team we had on this, I don't care what meeting it was, we had fun. There's a lot of uh, giving each other a bad time and ribbing. So, the team had a great time doing this project. I think I've been on here 14 years or something, Pete, a decade. Um, it was a good time. The field work and substantial completion, just put it in perspective, eight years, 270 weeks, 2,000 days. That's a long time. Um, I want to mention that the management team, Travis Baumgartner from Kiewit. Is Travis here? Hey, Travis. <laughs> Joe Crockett. Jill led the owner's rep team, and Pete McCormick, Denver Water Program Manager. Where's Pete? <laughs> Way in the back. Okay. And just two others I want to mention that are really getting this project closed out are Nathan Worker and Boyd Dunham. Boyd, you're in the back. Good job. <clears throat> I won't go through a lot of details, but I want to mention something that's really important for these projects. In the old days, Hoover Dam, for instance, they actually budgeted for major injuries or deaths. And they'd say, we're gonna have 14 deaths, here's a payout to the family. They'd actually budget it. That's not acceptable today. So our team, they didn't just do it right. Uh, they didn't just do the project, they did it right with safety in mind. And I wanna point out a few of the awards they've gotten. It really puts things in perspective. 2.5 million man hours without a recordable safety incident. Two, National Safety Council perfect record awards from the start of the project till June of 22 and 22 till, nine, till now. Uh, APWA exception performance in safety 2023. Other awards, lead gold for the operations building. We got our first infrastructure award, uh, Envision Sustainability Gold Award in 2021. AWWA Innovation Award and Engineering News Record 100th Year uh, publication named Denver Water's Owner of the Year uh, based on gross dam, alternative delivery, and North Water Treatment Plant. Here's one no one's heard about before. Pete was looking this morning. Uh, we were interviewed by the, uh, Pete was interviewed uh, about two weeks ago for the Project, Manage, Project Management Institute International Project of the Year. And we should hear, we're looking today. But that's a huge deal. Um, just want to point out a couple things. Kiwit did a great job as a lead contractor. They managed all their subs, excellent partner. PCL, the first time a very large contractor has worked with us, they did an excellent job uh, with above ground concrete and pulling it together. And Garney has basically done all our tanks. Here's two that you see right here. So they, they did a great job. It's been an honor working with this team on this project. And it's great to be working on Denver Water's largest capital plan in history. With that, we now have the owner of the treatment plant, Nicole. Thank you, Bob. Uh, what a beautiful day to be out here at NTP and celebrating the great work of, of the many people, contractors, engineers, and water quality and treatment personnel 
who helped not only design and build it, but bring it to life. Um, it is an honor to me, it is, excuse me, it is an honor for me to stand before you today representing all the amazing people from the water quality and treatment section who will take the keys to this plant and produce water for the next hundred years. Um, great leaders like Nicole Babiak, Ted Nicholas, David Mendoza, and your teams, thank you so much for the work that you have put into um, bringing this plant to life. Today's celebration of nearly a decade of work, as mentioned by all my predecessors, <laughs> um, you know, has really been intended to make sure that we can deliver clean, safe, high quality drinking water to 1.5 million, probably 2.5 million people over the next 100 years. And that's what Denver Water is really good at, is building infrastructure that lasts a lifetime and beyond. North Water Treatment Plant will prepare us to meet regulatory environmental changes, climate impacts, and um, our sustainability goals um, for Denver Water. North Water is currently sized to treat 75 million gallons a day, but is scalable towards um, upwards of 150 million gallons per day, depending on demands and the resiliency requirements of our system over time. As you walk through today, you will see some unique design elements on this treatment plant that have gathered um, some of the best ideas from many of the water treatment plants that have been built in the last 10 to 15 years. You will see deep bed, deep bed filtration units, um, and those are intended to help us get through flood and fire events. Um, they will be better and more efficient at removing particulate and pathogens like virus and bacteria. And again, assuring our customers and, the, and our communities that we're delivering high quality water. In addition to that, we've added UV units, ultraviolet technology at the end of every filter. And what this has allowed us to do is reduce the footprint of our disinfection um, process, which again is a sustainability goal, and reduce the amount of chemical we use in disinfecting our water. And that's kind of buried over here in the ground. You won't see that on your tour today, but again, kind of another uh, innovative and um, sustainable design element for our treatment plant. And in addition to that, we've added hydroelectric generation on the water that's coming into the plant. Um, and that assures, along with other design elements, that this treatment plant is one of the most sustainable treatment plants in our portfolio and leads and meets, helps us reduce our carbon footprint in our service to the Denver Water community. I believe Denver Water and North, that North Treatment Plant and Denver Water have made a great investment in the future, and I applaud all the people and the sacrifices you made to make this happen, and I hope that you can take away that you have made a difference for the future and for our customers um, long after you retire from <laughs> from your company or from Denver Water. <laughs>